it's not an ideal situation. Looking at uh, previous performances, I think he's in a, a better spot. Even though it's still a bad situation, I think it's better than when we previously saw him playing and he always had a max up. I think it's a suitable map as well because the T side and TT sides, it's much simpler if you have just, just, just generally, it's like, a, like the roles are simpler and making the calls, you have more time to do it on the T side and so on. So we'll see how it goes for Liquid, but of course they will actually be on the CT side first. And flip side will be on the T side. And I'm sure they'll be loving that. Blade at the helm. On the desk they set it up, they said that we should expect some faster stuff from Blade. But first, of course, we have to see if they can get the money going. And that, of, of course, is going to be a result of whether or not they win the pistol. And that's a good start there from World Edit. Headshot straight onto Elite, who gets some information, but that doesn't really tell you too much so early into the round. Sometimes on the CT side, you'll see uh, a player with a 5-7, perhaps, around the, the drop zone, or a CZ. So if the T's try to run a numbers game into the drop, you can be better equipped to deal with it, but doesn't seem that will be the case. Didn't see what Elise was carrying. So for now, a static blade is slowly moving the bomb towards A, failing the jump there. Waylander, not too far away from Twist around the underpass area. Waylander's just occupying danger, and Wilder has got his back in that position. Markelhoff and Seize, excuse me, are now moving away from A, but if we can take a quick look at JDM, he's got angles on the plateau area, so uh, he knows no one is there, which is why you can see three of the four players for Liquid towards A. There is a stepping now, will be heard by Twist, but the close range with the USB can be very finicky, especially when they're jumping around corners, and you can see Twist is not really prepared to do much against that. And now it falls down to Nitro, who will be subject to Molotov. He's got assistance there from Zeus by the APC, but they'll be systematically removed from the A-bomb site. And, well, it's not gone too well, has it, there, for Liquids. It's very little opportunity for JDM to do all that much here, and he will be executed by Markloff, and Flipside will win the round handily. And I mean, I feel like Alicia's play initially, where he goes for some information, maybe a cheeky frag at range, that's a, that's a fine play, but from the, the 4v5, having some players like Twist isolated in these super close positions when you could get rushed down by Glocks is definitely playing with fire. And they will be burned, and Flipside will start off with the money. And I think we wanted to see this, James. We wanted to see what Flipside have when they get to make the shots, when they have the control of the economy. Flipside have immediately gone, I think for a technical timeout, actually. I was going to say tactical, but Seas has taken off his headset. Uh, he was the player who was having issues before the match started, and perhaps they have begun again. So hopefully uh, whatever's going on there can be resolved quickly. But that is, yeah, that is the start. Uh, I think uh, you wanted to see if you want to see what Flipside can can actually do. Because obviously yesterday was horrific for them. Today cannot get any worse, that's for sure. Yeah. I th yesterday was actually kind of the reverse story. Because for me, I was like, I, I really want to see what Misfits have prepared. You know, I really want to see what, what Sean Gaz brings to the table from an approach perspective. And we got to see that. And it, <laughs> it did not result well for Flipside. But... Yeah, stylistically, it's harder to get blown up on this map because the T side, it's essentially, it really is like a really heavy defense and really heavy um, offense. T side and CT side, very simple. Whereas overpass, both t both sides can play heavy defense and offense in various scenarios across the map. So this is much more simple in that respect. Nice to see a uh, 10 keyless keyboard which is what uh, Seize is using. If you don't know what 10 keyless means, it means that it doesn't have the 10 keys, one to zero, which would be, or zero to nine if you like, which would be on the right-hand side. The numpad. Some people use, uh, use them for binds, um, but you've got your page up and page down. And also, I, the keyboards I use are 60%, so you don't have the arrows or the page up, page down, and have a function layer, although I don't use binds because I'm a gangster. I was going to say something, but I can't really remember what it was. Good. It's not a good start. It's for the best, Dan. <laughs> See how angled their keyboards are? Do you play with a super angled keyboard? Or No, I never have. I, I just, it just doesn't feel natural. I mean, the sli very slight, maybe like, but like, what, like 10 degrees, you know? <laughs> I think, uh, I th yeah, so there's the, the arrow keys in the page up, page down. Often used for binds. Um, if you don't have those, it's 60%. If you do have those, but don't have anything else, it's a 10 keyless keyboard. So, so James, those of you who don't know anything, there you go. If you had to guess, you know, because you, I don't, I mean, actually, you probably would be the kind of person that would just take a protractor everywhere. But if you had to guess, what angle are we looking at? That's about, what, 45 degrees? Um, extreme. I'd say about 70. Well, it depends. Like, 70? if you're going clockwise, 
looking at the right hand side of the keyboard. Well, obviously, like you line it up with what is horizontal or parallel to the desk, and then that is 180, right, right, and then 90 degrees would be a quarter. Look, so whatever, man. We're going to break. Way between that, so the production have had enough of your nonsense, Dan, <laughs> and we are going to a break. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. Right, well, have a little bit of a delay, but it's okay because you have me and James, and we're here to talk about Counter Strike, James. You're very good at this. I think I think it's good. We're going to move on from from protractors and uh, into the matchups of the day. So obviously, this is the first one, and we already spoke a lot about this. But Mouse Force Navi is up next, and that is one of the matchups which has a lot of contention for a lot of people. For me, I'm very Mouse Force sided. Yeah, I think I think like at this point we're just Mouse Sports fanboys, but I, I feel like either team are capable of winning, but Mouse Sports have to be the favourite. Um, I think partly it comes down to mental psyche if they can keep it together to win that. I think it's within their power, especially with how Navi are looking at the moment, but uh, time will tell, obviously. Space Soldiers versus Vanguard will be an interesting one as well. I think we're also Space Soldiers fanboys, but uh, they yeah. need to deliver their online performances on LAN. And I think that that's an interesting storyline in of itself, or journey discovery, because I feel like it's somewhat 
reminiscent of the Fnatic struggle for a while, where we saw Fnatic realizing, hey, we are just destroying everybody on land with sort of our we don't care sort of playstyle that we is our old identity. We need to learn how to bring that into land again, and they have just recently started to do that very effectively, and they're starting to perform very well on land. And you know, I think Space Soldiers are still in that mode where they're like, okay, land, we play it a little bit differently than we do online. They need they need that lack of respect, James. We need to see Xantares just wrecking everyone, just running around, not a care in the world. That's what we need from Xantaris. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And there's many more matches to come. You're mostly uh, looking forward to the Misfits match, right? Yeah, right at the end of the day is is the match which I am the most curious about. And it is Misfits versus G2. And it's just from the fact that uh, obviously we don't get to see much of you know Misfits. We, we haven't really seen much of you know Sean Gares in quite some time at the top tier of Counter-Strike. And he'll be pitted against one of the top teams. And one of the things we know about him is that he is one of the masters of Counter-Stratting. In the best of one format, that can make for very exciting results, and I think that uh, yeah, I think that could be for me one of the most exciting matches. The unpause is in. We are ready to now resume the match. Here we are. Flip side. If you have forgotten, or if you're just joining us, they won the pistol round, and uh, here they are on what appears to be. Okay, we're up. I think we'll have a round reset before everyone's jumping around. So. Never mind, we won't talk about the buy just yet. But what we can talk about is picks for GoTV, Dan. Where do you stand? Uh, on this map, I would probably go with with Elige and or Twi actually maybe Twist, Twist or Elige. And as far as pick one, just pick one. And so pick one. I would probably take Elige then. It's it's hard not to choose. Mr. Elige is the superstar of Team Liquid. And as far as flip side are concerned, uh, on the T side, I'm probably looking towards. I'm curious what Markloff is going to bring to the table today. His form has looked pretty damn good at the past major as well. And yesterday, we didn't, again, we, as you said, we didn't get to see enough of Flipside, but Markloff looked like he was poised to destroy everyone. We saw an insane clutch from him right at the start, but then there weren't many spots where he could really do much. So I'm looking forward to Markloff's performance here today. One thing I have, I don't think I've ever mentioned in uh, all the majors about go, my GoTV picks is that one, one thing I think it's important for, for those of you at home who play the game and you want to learn how to better play a position you like is to look at these teams, look at the player who plays the position that you want to play and uh, just watch his entire POV you know, while, while he's alive uh, to see the decisions he makes, the risks, etc. And uh, compare it to your, to your own. Obviously, the scenario is not the same, but it can help you learn uh, when you're overextending, when you're doing something that's unnecessary. I think people like Zipek, for example, are good to watch where you might see them jump peek something, but they won't necessarily take it, the engagement, even if it serves itself. The information can be enough. If, you're, if your presence will slow them down, that can allow time for rotation if you're on a CT side, things like that. So, so GoTV go is a really good uh, learning tool which is uh, one of the reasons why the Majors are the best tournaments to watch, in my opinion, among many other reasons. But here we are, finally, back into the game. Flip side have won a pistol, and it's now their turn to impose their will onto an opponent. Liquid have half bought in this round. We see some deagles, but nobody's got Kevlar. They're leaving money in the hole. Yeah, one thing that's really cool about Flipside, and we have to watch out for as well, is the utility usage. A blade has innovated was all one well was one of the, I suppose one of the core integ innovators of basically tactics on you know ironically being called flip side tactics the team that he plays for but uh, he is a master of that and we see lots of great pop flashes for him there's quite a few named after him uh, one namely into into drop and he's got some great uh, drop take grenades and on rounds like this a very very well routined and tactical team really does shine and we are seeing right now the the approach of this anti-eco slash anti-force buy as looks like maybe unsure as to exactly what Liquid have invested into. It's going to be the A take and we can see them using all the utility, clearing all the corners and effectively just isolating any players that could be there and making it impossible or as close to impossible to put damage to be done and they're on the bomb side, James. Yeah, Nitro has to concede his position and go through the smoke because he was running out of bullets and at this time you wonder if Liquid will play for containment. It is suicide for them to, to go for a retake situation and again for those of you at home, considering Liquid's investment in this round, they can either, uh, if they were all to die in this round because they only bought kept the Deagle and did buy Templar, they could buy Deagles again in the next one if they wanted to. And if that was their idea, and they can keep, they can stay alive, they could buy Templar instead and have Deagles and Kevlar and in the next round, or just just uh, continue this round and hope they run into the stack. 
And it's, uh, teams are beginning a bit more cognizant, I think, as well as, as to the idea of trying to avoid giving away money to the SMGs, as the SMGs, of course, do have a much bigger kill reward bonus, uh, double or more, in, uh, in the case of, you know, rifles or, you know, pistols. And uh, although they will lose three players here, they will save two. Or liquids. And another argument of not investing too heavily into that first round for liquid is the fact that when you do get that buy round on this map, you need full utility. There is really, I mean, it feels bad, doesn't it, James? You're on that CT side, you play the first buy round, you got like a flash and a smoke. That doesn't feel good. You need the inst all the incendiaries. Yeah, you need you need your grenades. So I'm glad that they're not uh, really investing in this round and they're focusing on the buy rounds. So you've got to prioritize your money. And your Julius apparently as well. <laughs> if you're a Waylander. Yes, indeedy. I like. I like. This is a good read, though. We see this from Oscar as well, uh, where if they win the pistol, then um, well, it depends on what side they're on. But basically, he Ooh, he he has a fair read that there won't be helmets in this Ooh. round. But yes, Nitro has got a lot of information here because it was a poor spot. <laughs> Can't do anything with it though. The rotation comes in late for the C2 side, and again, not really working with much. Twist and Zeus making their way towards A. Not quite into the side, but I was going to say, Waylander can be confident with these pistols because he's not expecting helmets in this round. Maybe not even armor. Oh, nice kill there from Elise. It won't get anything else though. Two kills, that's okay. That was the, those jewelies remind me of Get Right. And they're like the Swedish jewelies, the, the colors of Sweden and Get Right used to brandish them very often. Yeah, so Waylander could have bought a Mac 10 for example. But uh, like if you see Oscar on a CT side of Mirage, if they if they win the pistol, but the opponent plants the bomb, then there's a reasonable chance he will just face mid with a USP because he doesn't want to waste money. Because in in that case, it is a waste, especially when you're buying a sniper on an SMG when a USP will do the job. But uh, we can talk more about that in the next match. 3-0. It's buy time for Team Liquid JDM on the uh, AWP. They've got a fair amount of grenades because they did not splash all the cash. We see C's now, he'll be uh, keeping an eye on the drop area, harassing now while Markolov is looking for an opening around B. And we can see so far Liquid are being as conservative as they can be with the utility, but it's still, again, this is why you need so much money, because he does, oh, that's a good pick from World Edit, but yeah, the utility does run low quite fast on the CT side, and with a pick like that from flip side, they have so much time to work with as well, and now with drop control, they've got so many options for Liquid that starts to get very desperate. They're already in this situation where they should probably try to gamble, try to hold on and onto one side, stack it, and they've have stacked towards B. However, with that kill, maybe there's time now that the connector area is opened up to get onto rotation and to work something together on this round. And JDM does have the AWP, and right now he is he is actually going to be the solo man on B. So it's a good setup actually from Liquid after all is said and done. Yeah, C's job in that situation was to die, let's just note that. If he gets a kill, probably a bonus at that point, but uh, he's playing for information, but it is a very slow move in reaction to that from flip side tactics, and there's always three people on the, uh, B, on the A bomb site now. Twist playing around the bomb, he's got to do here. That's a great second kill from him, but he can't get the third. In the meantime, Elise has managed to get onto the site, and there's a kill onto Blade. JDM is slowly coming towards the door now, and World Edit's, World Edit's position is known, so JDM may just go through that smoke. Although he's still behind it for now, not going to take any risks. There goes the liege. Well, they're looking for the trade frag, but JDM has been posted for a while and delivers the final kill. An expensive round, an expensive first round for Liquid, but they're on the scoreboard. Yeah, it gets really scary now. They, the potential to be reset is is uh, really real here because, of course, again, we emphasize how important the money is. And so... It, there's a lot of approaches that Flipside could go with, and it does come down to the mind games. Because they ch could try to go for a super fast play through onto the B site saying, hey, Liquid aren't going to have the full amount of utility, so they're going to want to be conservative. So we can get through B choke points really quickly and not suffer against utility. And it may be the case, actually. They're moving quite quickly towards Plateau, a lot of the players here. But it looks like they may actually wait out an initial burst of utility, maybe base it out from Liquid before then re-executing into the site. Oh, no, you can't just also run for a smoke chase. See how it works out for them, looking to break just as Misfits were doing yesterday. Shock and awe perhaps, Elise though is a very dangerous player, looking for his third kill, but JDM will steal it. Elise on 9 HP, down to the pistol, but he hears the footsteps. He doesn't have a chance to reload in this situation. He's got to be there to trade frag, worst case scenario for his teammates, but he is looking for the meat. He is the alligator, but are his teeps sharp enough?
Wait, well did it, last man standing. One versus two, this is doable for him. Elysia trying to distract, trying to be nuisance as much as possible. Only so much he could do though. But the bomb is not with well did it. He can back off and try and reset the situation, but he will have to return. For those of you wondering why Elysia had the pistol out, he can't really risk a reload in that position knowing his enemy is right above him. As, as well that it would hear it and just pop out and kill him anyway, so fancy his chances with the USP, but look where it's left Nitro alone. Nitro, however, does have control of the bomb, and that is really the key advantage that he possesses in this situation. What of it needs to be good on the shots here. Whiffs the first one, gives away his position. The one versus one, and Nitro is going to take it. That's a very, very big round from Liquid. They will avoid the reset, and in doing so, it is in fact Flipside's money, who, uh, which is now in trouble, and they will not be able to have a full buy round to pressure Liquid off of their economy. Yeah, this is a do we force buy round from Flipside. Well, it's a question. Um, I don't. I don't know if they're the the kind of team who would be inclined to do it, though. So uh, let's see. No, nope, it'll be the pistols. They're playing the long game. It's still early days at present. Round number six. Here like are the it. first match of today. That's, that's a nice one. I think. I think. I think you're right. There's like there's not a bad decision there, but I like the consistent choice. <laughs> the the long the long term choice. I yeah. Think, uh, I think it's very important to recognise it. Yeah. It w it was curious. Um, watching well that it orping on the T side of Cobblestone because he isn't the most aggressive warper um, if you look at other snipers on other teams. So I'm curious to see uh, how Blade will utilize him in this half. But again, for now, they're on the pistols. Nitro has spotted a player towards a long, but only the one. They don't know that four people are here, although JDM has seen somebody lower as well. Quickly uh, make their way past the door. So. I think they can assume that there are three players now towards the A site for the time being. You see again, Elysia in that small screen, he's in that forward position on Plateau. So he, he's, he's got fair warning for them. Ooh, off the boost as well, off the play's head. That's, that's beautiful stuff there, but can they make it work? Zeus with a cheeky frag off the CZ will eventually get traded down. If we consider the investment, Flipside have done immense damage and even have a chance to win the round. The people needed to connect. It does not, and with that, the chances to win the round will be dashed. But the damage that they did was pretty enormous, and that was honestly their most realistic objective, was to get some damage in. And they achieved that objective, and that really puts them in a fantastic position where Liquid's economy is really wow. heavily stretched the second shot as well an important note that uh, Elige was just biding his time on plateau um, for people at home you don't necessarily need to flank until you see someone because it's important he just contains the area he's kind of holding part of the net so if he goes down he needs to make sure his team is still uh, best place to abuse the information they have anyway flip side great damage for an eco round I don't know if any of them had Kevlar in that round, but here we are, back on the rifles. They've got a fair amount of grenades as well. So it looks like there'll be pop flashes. Smoke grenade into danger to stop the CTs from uh, having a crossfire. And Blade will quickly go out. He's the information man. Again, he, it may be uh, that he goes to die eventually. He can try an entry because uh, it will make his life easier to move the rest of the pieces across the chessboard later on. Again, JDM's got the angle down plateau, which leaves Liquid with lots of people in A. This is a common theme that we've seen from Liquid so far. Yeah, it's not looking too bad for them. I mean, they will give up drop zone, but they have all the info, especially with this flank oh, coming in. But, ooh, that's the bomb as well, and all of a sudden things get a bit awkward. They have to double back through the dragon. It's actually can. So he's getting another. He gets a dink. That's actually pretty damn huge. They are at a man disadvantage flip side, and they do have now one of their members critically low. They're going to go back for the B play. I don't know how they got the kill there on Elise. They will, though, but JDM is holding it down, and then once again rerouted back. JDM hitting shot after shot after shot, and that is now Liquid in a brilliant position. Once again, they do lose members, but there's no money here for Flipside. That flank was massive. Where did that come from? I looked at the radar and suddenly I saw Zeus coming up these stairs. I was like, hold on a second. Not only has he flanked them almost immediately, but he's running straight at the bomb. But there must have been a sound cue. I wasn't paying attention to where he was on the radar before that. So yeah. he must have heard them running away. Because also, it looks like the player pushed up the middle ramp. So he must have been just pushed out long and then dropped down silently. So <laughs> that took everyone by surprise, James, apart from Zeus. <laughs> so that is, that's massive. You can, see, you can see how flustered they were at the end there as well, but that said, the Beagle's doing damage once again, and... 
Liquid need to be incredibly cautious now from this perspective, just due to the fact that there is a numbers advantage now for flip side. There are two Deagles in the mix, and an M4 picked up as well by Blade. That was a huge play from Zeus. So bear in mind when you look at his performances in these matches, um, they definitely go beyond the scoreboard. Waylander this time. See, maybe this will make uh, Flipside leave somebody over to one site more when they head towards the other. This is essentially an eco round for them. So we can only take so much out of this, but here we go. Elysia's looking hungry for information. I think he's pop flash himself into the lower area while this action is going in towards B, but they're already down to four men. What are they willing to do with this? Twist be taken out meanwhile, and JD must deliver again. Starts it off well with the second shot. He's going to be wrapped as we speak, though, and that will be the end of him. But did he do enough damage? There's multiple players incredibly weak here for Flipside. There's no Kevlar apart from on Markov, who's also very weak. Nitro, he can absolutely do this. They have to cross for the bomb plant, and he knows it. He's going to try to make his way around. See if he can hear any sound cues, any bit of information to make this clutch easier. But these rounds for Liquid, so many of them have been so incredibly hard and laborious, and they never should be. Nitro can't do it this time. Every other time they did it, but all of a sudden, Flipside are going to be able to capitalize upon the immense damage that they did in the previous four rounds that Liquid won. What an angle. How are they winning these rounds, James? I mean, this this should not be happening. Liquid are going to be feeling awful about that. Again, a headshot on the second bullet as well from World Edit. I don't know how Twist... I think it does 12, uh, 90, sorry, 88 damage there. That's unfortunate for him, but there we go. As you said, Dan, the damage that they've inflicted in all the previous rounds puts Liquid in a sticky situation. They've chosen to force their way out of it. Will they be successful, though? That might be up to uh, Flipside Tactics, unless Zeus has another genius flank in mind. Waylander will be alone, keeping an eye on the A site. Nitro and Zeus are looking aggressive over there. Seized. Just making sure there's no uh, no boost coming in through that smoke, but backing off just in case. Often when there are smokes up there, at least on my computer, like if you, I find if I spray through the smoke in the corner where people would appear, then you kind of get this weird graphic glitch and it shows you the outline of the uh, the arch or whatever. If anyone else has that, feel free to send me a tweet. I'm curious to know. Four people for Liquid here on the B bomb side. They've made the right read, but the push isn't here just yet from flip side. Yeah, they're trying to bait out any possible utility that Liquid may have in this round. And they could have actually held on to a little bit. Good. But it's not going to help it too much. It's going to be up to the pistols. And it seems like the pistols are quite good in this game so far. Off to a good start. They have the man advantage. Guns collected now. But can they capitalize? Can they close? So far, so good here for Liquid World. Well, Last man standing. AK in hand. 40 seconds to try to work this. He does not have the bomb on his back at the moment. He needs to collect it up the stairs if he wants it. But... Again, looking for any peaks here, but Liquid playing it with discipline, trying to play off of one another, looking for those crossfires. It's Twist for first contact, he goes down. So weak as well, it? but at least cannot get that bullet off. And that's going to be the round for flip side. Every round, James, it doesn't matter what the buy is, goes down to the last man. Yeah, it's really unfortunate for Elise that he didn't manage to uh, land his jump on the first try. And I do wonder if uh, the failed jump gave his position away as well, because he had to jump twice. So maybe, because well, that it didn't know where he was. So Maybe the landing impact con uh, conceded his position. If so, maybe that loses him the round. I don't know. It wasn't ideal for him in any way, but here we are. The force buy has failed for Team Liquid. The odd pistol will be purchased in this round. But it looks like Flipside may extend their lead. Good. They've got a good read on the uh, CT economy. Flipside seized has pulled out the MAC-10. So he may be the expendable player in this uh, situation. Again, you might think, why doesn't like Blade have the MAC-10 and let Seize go with the AK? But Seize is the man who deals with the drop area. So I think it's better that they play their correct positions and you have him on a MAC-10 rather than uh, messing things around too much. Yeah, there's a lot of mind games between players who attack certain positions and players that defend certain positions. And you get all the information as the match goes on. It's, it's a really big deal. So I like the point you make there. And it's really funny because in this game so far, if we discount the pistol round, there has not been a round except one where there was three or more players surviving. And there was, well, there was one round where there was three players surviving. Every other round so far, the team that won that round had two players alive at best, which is kind of insane. No one has economy in this game so far. And we will see Flipside slowly trying to hunt down the remainder of Liquid as that bomb does tick away closer and closer to detonation. Well, that's a... Nice frag from, uh, from Twist. He might nice. actually be able to... Oh, looks like he's not going to go for the gun. Looking for the next frag. 
Obviously, in these kinds of situations, it can be really awesome if you can get an exit kill and then steal the gun and then save it. That's uh, often one of your objectives, but not to be for Liquid. It's six to four the score for flip side tactics on the T side at the moment. It's a hard game to talk about, James, because it feels kind of like it's as so many rounds have been so close that it feels like neither team has ever had any comfort or really any momentum. It's rough, Dan. It's rough like elephant, elephant skin. Four rounds on the board already, though, for Liquid. They can make a, uh, a reasonable half out of this yet. And this will be an important round to start with. They've got a lot of flashbangs and a few smoke grenades left after what they've deployed. Elise getting an early pick on the platform. Not sure if it was through the smoke or not, but uh, if it wasn't through the smoke, he may have seen a number of players there. And looking at the, the radar, we've got four players in B for Team Liquid. So I'm assuming that Elise saw some of these boys. Almost all the nades are gone for Liquid. The question is, will uh, Flipside pull the trigger on this push? Looks like they'll go drop again with the bomb. Three players down there. Light offense on the plateau. Happy to give it to Liquid as they start to expand their presence onto the site here. Pushing out of the drop area. And it's a couple kills for them. Three versus three now. Smoke's still up. You can see JDM playing around the corner with that one. Twist still on the bomb site there as well. Or rather on the plateau looking over onto the bomb site. So right now it gets really weird because I love this from Flipside, they're just holding the ground, they're just holding position, in comes JDM for the surprise attack, but it's going to be down to twist now in the one versus two. Does, Blade still has the bomb, I think he has got to throw it to Wild at it, to, he's trying to do that, but he, he collected it again, okay, that has not been heard by Twist, but he'll see now on the radar that the bomb is no longer there, so he knows what's going on, but doesn't know where Wild at it is, and Wild at it is running to the A site, Twist has to make a decision, he chooses to flash the plateau, and then make his way towards A. And he has a nice angle on the cross. Well done, it has full health though, so Twist has to be amazing. Well done, looking for it though, saving up the opportunity, and the spray is there. I mean, it's fair enough, he had a, a good chance to get that kill, but he also gave Twist the opportunity, and he seized upon it. Yeah, that's, that's a really interesting spot there. Of course, you know, th there's so many spots like that in Counter-Strike where you're thinking to yourself, do I go for the sure thing? which is the bomb plant. Okay, I'm not going to win the round, guaranteed, but I'll create another situation Ooh. which would be favorable. Because as you say, like he was walking, he was looking for the peak with the AWP. I'll tell you what happened there, especially judging by Wild Edit's face. Well, Twist ducked as soon as he saw Wild Edit, and I'm pretty sure Wild Edit shot Twist above his head because Twist ducked. I think Twist pressing crouch wins him the round there. Sounds like a very marginal situation, James. Sounds like Counter-Strike thing. Because I was thinking, like, Twist is standing here for so long, how is he not dead, Mr. Crouch? Well, JDM is dead, and that's Plateau taken over. And this has been a, essentially a fort for a Liquid so far. They've been really good at holding Plateau. That's one of the reasons why Liege is so good to watch. Very, very strong in that position. Out goes Zeus. Those spots the bulk of the flip side players that remain after Markov died on his effort on his Valiant's effort and B. But it's all about A now for flip side and. Two of the reigning three players for Liquid are going to try to put a defense up, but I don't know how successful this can possibly be, James. Look at all this utility. Look at this. Four players versus two on the A bomb site. Elysia is still on the way. And his arrival may be today. Two more grenades here for the T side. Just guns, but it's the CT ones which are firing off. Twist, there is a flashbang there. But he won't get the kill. Nitro completely exposed versus Blade's head, and Blade will win the day. Now it's Elysia versus two. Starcraft aim. Can't quite kill Markalov. Uh, not Markalov. Well did it. And there he is with the CZ to finish things off. Seven to five in favor of Flipside. That's pretty scared in that position for Flipside. Elysia with an AK and a 1v2. Definitely like his chances in that, but awkward engagement for him. And credit to Flipside opening up the A side of the map as well as the or trying to you know, use Markov as best they could to harass towards B. And this is something that Markov can continue to do now, and this is one of the reasons why this can be kind of a difficult map to play, because Markov can do that, and it can be a B play. Markov can do that, and it can be an A play. Like it's, it can be very obscure as to what you're actually doing on the T side from the CT's perspective. It was really unfortunate there on the A side because I think Elise threw a flash, but. I think it was Twist who came up just a tad too soon and got blinded by it. Seven to five. Situation sucks for Liquid. Elise is on a scout. Playing around the uh, statue position. Meanwhile, JDM is over towards a long with Zeus. Playing close range with the pistols, if you're wondering why JDM doesn't have to scout right now. That would be why. 
Cliff side with a big focus on the B bomb site, but they have uh, no presence whatsoever towards A. You've seen these flanks from used before, so that may spur flip side on to uh, start moving quickly towards B. But they're being careful, they're being meticulous. Yeah, they've been really good at taking a drop over, and again, it's just such a, a strength of flip side. Their map control can be very good. See, it's all toy and play, but it's going to be him that is the play thing. Alige and Twist doing a good job so far. No one is dead yet. The CZ. I suppose it's just as us. I suppose, you know, it's only fitting that Flipside receive a taste of their own medicine, losing to the pistols. And that will get the sixth round on the board for Liquid, but they are still behind one. And there is, uh, there's actually no money in the bank from Flipside. I don't know why I sound surprised. No one has had any money in this game. In the words of the French, Sequoia. Oh, that's a nice that shot. Headshot. Yeah, it was. It's weirdly difficult to get headshots like with the scout, just generally speaking. I guess I guess because when you're using an AWP you don't aim for a headshot, whereas a scout, you know, that you kind of have to in buy rounds. Love me some scout. The only one I respect though is blood in the water. And maybe there's blood in the water of this round. Flip side don't have much to offer right now. But again, liquid four rounds early on six now. While it's been difficult, they can still make a good half out of this. I think six rounds is already quite reasonable. But they could even do two better. Lots of footsteps being made by flip side. I really can't see them getting much of anything out of this, apart from holes in chests. Indeed, they have been Swiss cheesed up. <clears throat> this is a really interesting game so far. I like uh, that we have a pretty close scoreline. You know, both teams gonna be, will be able to show off their game, just like it, with, in the full capacity against something that, as you highlighted, was sort of denied to Flipside yesterday when they were up against Misfits. But here, not the case. Double up Nitro and JDM should be fun. A, a quick mix-up for the last round of the first half, as far as the CT defense goes. But as far as the T offense goes from Flipside, let's see if they try to mix things up or if they'll really even get the opportunity. Nitro. It's forced back here by the spam, but Ooh. he is brave, and he'll get the headshot. He will be traded, but I respect that effort. He picked up the kill. I think he was shot down to 1 HP. That is uh, brutal stuff, but he still delivered the kill, man. He died on his sword. That was confidence. I respect that. I respect that. He, I love how he peeks back into all of the bullets and just... They're just so confident. It's like... Uh, the Last Samurai. Tom Cruise, of course. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. When they're all running at the Gatling gun. Yeah. That, that part of the movie seems seemed a bit, bit silly, but I understand what they're going for. Not the fact that Tom Cruise was the Last Samurai. <laughs> well, 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 obviously, yeah. Obviously that. Blade and Waylander making their way through A-Lung with the bomb. Meanwhile, Markloff and Seized are on the other side. So we've got two per site. So I do wonder what the plan is here. It seems Blade is rotating away, but Twist is close enough to hear this. At least keeping a focus on the drop zone. They may already already realise that it's a a fake. But now Blade is going back towards A long. So I'm really confused as to what's going on. Smokes on Blato B. Is it a double fake? Or did it just change mind mid-round? Maybe it was the right call. Elise wondering what's going on around the drop. Twist and Zeus still around the other part of the area. Twist with a pre-fire there, but doesn't get a second kill. Mark off the trade. Yeah, nice off angles there from Twist. We'll give them a really a fair warning here as to the push. And right now it's really hard to get up onto this A-box. Like they're losing members left, right and centre. But Waylander will start to alleviate the issues now with a couple kills of his own. And it's up to JDM here. 1v2 clutch with the AWP, not the easiest task ever. JDM, what do you have here for Liquid? Now so many positions to check, you just have to try to be committed here. You've got to make a guess and you've got to stick to it. You can't check everything, that is the nature of clutches in these positions. JDM looking for the quick scope. he gets it onto Waylander, the headshot in fact. Just one more, it's Markloff with the AK, lying away on the side, JDM knows he can't quite connect the shot. So close, and it will be flip side to take the final round of the first half. Ding, ding. Okay, 21 HP. Boom, wow. that is such a difficult shot. Yeah. That's really, really difficult stuff. He was committed, man, he was so committed to that. Yeah, as you see his kill in his position, looked like he was on 90 ping because he was slowly tracking behind the player, but eventually got there. Uh, so here we are, eight to seven. Flip side, take a thin lead into the second half. Lots to play for. Do you have a favorite at this point? 
I still, I still favor Liquid. I mean, I, I went uh, with him for my predictions. And the thing with those predictions is, is that we don't know 100%. Dude, Nitro's keyboard is just so awesome. So there was discussion on Tinterweb that uh, he has a widely available keyboard but has changed the keycaps to clear uh, ones. Uh, that's really cool. But I have, have to get on the clear keycaps. I have keycaps. no uh, confirmation. Um, but yeah, to finish the, the thought, um, Liquids uh, for me are, are definitely still the favorites. Now they move into the T side. Uh, of course, and they, they honestly, Liquid got a lot of rounds for their CT side. They're going to be feeling very comfortable here. If they're able to do as Flipside did, get off to a good start with a T pistol victory, I, I'm absolutely, I'm massively favoring Liquid's ability. I think Flipside had to have a massive T half. Twist is flying through this map, delivering one headshot, can he find a second one, Blade is in trouble, and there are three T's now, how does he win that situation? He doesn't, he goes down, Mark of Waylander all getting jettisoned into the sun, four versus two, very quickly indeed, well that it has much to do, and now he's on his own, it's lonely, it's cold, and he's got three players who want to bully him in the playground, and they'll do exactly that, eight to eight. So there it is. Liquid able to win the T pistol, and that means that both teams have won a pistol round, and it does mean as well that we get to see Liquids on that uh, on that good economy. And we'll, I wonder if the game will start to look cleaner because obviously the first half was very messy from both teams. We had a position where you know Liquid didn't quite have. Never really got an economy rolling, and even though they were winning rounds, even though they were playing anti ecos, always going down to two men surviving. Same thing for for flip side. So can Liquid make the difference there? That's the improvement I'm looking for. They know they'll be up against not necessarily a force buy, but pistols and maybe some nades. So let's see what kind of drills and routines that they have prepared for such a situation and it's a typical start here just trying to make sure that they're safe against what Flipside may try to do aggressively at the start of the round before they then decide okay they're not giving us anything it's time for us to start our game plan here in this round. Flipside tactics are carrying two smokes we spoke about smokes yesterday don't need to repeat myself but uh, we'll keep an eye on when those come into play. Waylander and Markolov, maybe if you're on GoTV, you can keep an eye on those. There's the first one. Instant reaction smoke. And that gives Liquid an idea of what the CTs might have in mind. But there's great presence off by JDM. Spraying through the smoke in case the CTs try to get into position behind it. Very good play from him. Yeah, that's really big. And, and with that kill, it's like, okay, we well, just understand. Okay, they tried to use that smoke to make the play. We got the kill. It's kind of unlikely there would be a second player there, but just in having the kill, their confidence is going to go up. The re-smoke here, that will allow them to easily deal with it. You can see Zeus is checking the corner there. We've seen so many embarrassing situations when a team pushes through and they can't, you can't check left and right at the same time, and the, the player in that corner will get the better of you, but looks like GNU will clear it. He's also cleared the stairs, and now they've got a good vantage point onto the bomb site. The smoke will start to dissipate, allowing the rest of the teammates of the Team Liquid to get in onto the action. And, Looking pretty clean so far. In fact, it will be completely clean. And that is nice, considering the first half, I this is a breath, a breath of fresh air. Marvellous. Now, if you saw JDM creeping through the corner of that smoke, that just shows how important the, the pre-fire is through the smoke, as I think it was Waylander was trying to get into position. Because as Dan mentioned, he eliminates that position. If, if, the, if, he, if he doesn't get that kill, and they commit to the B bomb site, and that second smoke goes down by flip side, Waylander almost is guaranteed a kill in that situation, although JDM may not creep through the smoke. Maybe he does. But there's a fair chance they lose round at that point. So, presence of mind going a long way with that kill through the smoke. Flip side on pistols once again. Four man stacked towards the B bomb site. Blade looking towards A, trying to find out what's going on, but they don't have any uh, any smokes, any muck to play around. They will be sacrificed. And it's kind of the coin flip situation. Again, flip side. Uh, like this is what you need to have if you're a, if you're a team trying to play at any level. Really, you'd never want to have just one good anti eco round. You know, we see they could have the passive approach. Then they have a B hit. They've got a passive approach. Now they have an A hit. And we saw that flip side stack the B bomb site, trying to gamble, trying to you know go for the coin flip. Is it A or is it B in this situation? And it was A, unfortunately for them. But that said, it's unlikely they would have been able to do too much. Perhaps they only would have just served to give money to Team Liquid as they would be getting the kills. But and this could actually this can work out kind of well sometimes because uh, sure you're at the wrong bomb site, but now you can sort of play for exits in sneaky positions potentially with uh, quite a lot of players. So, ooh, what's, what's going on here? I respect that. Okay. 
That is awesome. Zeus is having a good time. And he can do that because he doesn't have anything to lose. He's just running around with armor and a CZ, so he can run around and try and knife people through the smoke. It's, it's fine, but it's good. It's good that he's playing with confidence considering the position he's been put in, so that is important. And I think that's great morale for the team. If like, it's a player, if the enemy sings, you just run around in the smoke, just trying to knife people, that's awesome. It looks like generally a confident guy, that's, that's for sure. He's got that air of confidence about him, which is good because he's, he's, in, he's in the leadership position, isn't he? So <laughs> I suppose that is, that is fitting. If Bardolph's in the smoke of a knife, Bardolph gets a kill every single time. Look at those eyes, man. Those eyes are beautiful, Dan. Hashtag beautiful eyes. 10 to 8, two round lead for Team Liquid. Five AKs on the T side for the time being. Maybe there will be an opportunist collection of a sniper rifle should they win this round. Seize on the MP9 around the drop zone. That fast fire rate may come in handy. So Liquid looking to perhaps run some sort of a fake here with the presence towards Plateau and if they get a kill or two they will pull rotation potentially as there is four members towards the, well I mean there's already four members towards the bomb site but maybe they'll pull them back now as well and it starts to look in towards the A site and maybe that means that Liquid didn't do enough pressure towards B, perhaps they should have committed a player through for an attack but the case will be that it's a 4v4 now that at least picks up the kill and Flipside don't look as though they're any the wiser, they're still playing a very spread out setup. He is very vulnerable and Nitro is coming up quick. He might have an angle. Just barely misses it, but we'll keep pushing forward as well. At great risk. Nice shot onto Nitro, but there's the trade. And now the bomb site is in the property of Liquid. Molotov's landing. CTs have got to back off. They don't want any sound cues given away by getting tagged by it by accident. Will they try to force their way? Look how fresh these smoke grenades are. That may just shut down their run, but it is still a three on three, so they may uh, sacrifice one player, but if Seeds goes down, will that be time for an eco? Waylander's made his way out of the smoke in the meantime. He's on the ramp. Seeds down to 15 HP. Waylander can run distraction. They're not making it awkward. All the CTs getting the kills. That was not an easy retake, but they succeed with all three players intact. Yeah, that's, that's one of those spots, isn't it, where you have three separate 1v1s, which, as you say, like, it's, it's not very... Like, that's a really ideal scenario for the ZTs in such a disadvantageous position, because when you're defending a bombsite, it's crossfires. You're, you're creating 2v1s, you're shutting down choke points to funnel the CTs, so you can use the numbers to get an advantage, but they managed to get a series of 1v1s, and they won all of them, which is pretty impressive. And that is very needed, because that also means that they have three players surviving with guns, they pick up a couple couple AKs as well, and that's going to really be a nice boon for their economy moving forwards. That said, having to spend all the money on the grenades is a brutal reality of the CT side, and it's very expensive. And they are very low now on money anyway. JDM looking for a passive pick early into the round. Not much given to him though. You can't expect too much, really. From, aggression, from the aggression standpoint when it comes to, this, to a CT side on Cobblestone. Two-man peak from Liquid. Always nice. Teamwork makes the dream work. Wayland's keeping an eye on things. Ooh, this is curious, but can they do it? You've got to make sure you're not too close to the wall there because there's a lip which will uh, trap you if you try to jump up and you're too close. Elish looking for something. This won't be easy for Seized to deal with. And it's like he's given his position away. It's going to be Elish coming in for the frag. That is so insanely confident from Elish. He's like, oh, you're there, are you? I'll just run up there and kill you. Simple as that. And that's going to be the team pulling the trigger onto the bomb site now as they start to push in. The trades will be there, but with Elish's kill, they will have the numbers advantage. Markloff trying to hold the line, but twists with it there with the instant headshot. Does get dinked himself, but the power of the AKs reigns supreme once again as Twist gets more damage done. And it's up to Wilder to try to just keep the orb in his hands. As we'll have a bunch of hungry liquid players perhaps on the hunt momentarily but I mean they don't have the best money in the world so they might not really be they might be quite content to allow the world of it to escape but looks like they have a Saint Elige on a mission. Elige might miss world of it though he's gonna perhaps even wrap back into a pick onto the A site. Spotting some info he's been spotted and he will be fragged so that's not a good look for him. He's got ketchup on his shirt, Dan. 
catch up on his shirt. Maybe he should have worn a bib. <laughs> Tree position. Oh, got to be careful not to uh, take out your teammate as well. So, 11 to 9 is the current score. Flipside are taking a tactical timeout at present. Their money sucks. There's some communication across the team. They look fr uh, frustrated, James, at the moment. But also decisive, and that's, that's actually a good thing. Yeah, well that it was doing some talking at the beginning. Now it's a lot of Blade and a bit of Markolov. Can they right the ship, though? It's not sinking just yet, but the Coast Guard has been called. Still lots of talking on the team. Yeah. I mean, they can. This is a good round to do it. This is like exi existence style, right? They're going to lose this round. I mean, we did see a, a, a USP round one yesterday, but uh, they could have looked solid on the round such as this today, and I expect that to continue. It's, it's actually crazy because that, that one 3v3 after plant situation, which you would expect Liquid to win, it's one of those spots where you never want to lose a round, but it, it's, what, it's that spot too where, okay, you did lose a round, and then you immediately win one back and completely reset the economy. And from a long-term perspective, an implied rounds perspective, you get more situations where you have advantage, and that is more situations to build more money. And so it actually works out long term, generally better. But again, you never want to play to lose a round. So it's sort of one of those things where, hey, you know, this is an opportunity for us. Although we weren't looking to to lose a round, there is a potential here for us to really do a lot of damage still. And that's where Liquid find themselves. And that is also what is frustrating for the flip side, being in this position. Because that you know that you lose momentum, you have to give away rounds to your opponents. They'll generate more confidence, more money, and we're getting towards the end of this map, and it's the best of one. This is an incredibly important match for both teams. And I have to say, Flipside have impressed me today. But the T side of Liquid, we're seeing great confidence from the likes of Elysian Nitro. And that is a very good sign if you are a fan of the Team Liquid side. Melanda has stolen away in AK-47, but in comes the cavalry to try to reclaim that. That's awkward. The bailiffs uh, are coming, James. I wonder if uh, what the American term for a bailiff is. Yeah, I, I just think about that. I'm not, I have no idea. Repo man. Is it? The bailiff sounds much more scary, actually, because it <laughs> sounds much more... <laughs> there, was a, there was a wrestler called Repo Man once back in the day. Because that kind of sounds like a budget superhero, doesn't it? Repo man, repo man, coming to take all your goods because you're you're bankrupt. JDM's got a superhero chin. He could be repo man. Let's go, bailiff. Much more. I think it's more eloquent. Twelve to nine when flip side uh, return to a buy round. No sniper rifle for them. That's important on the CT side of a cobblestone. Instead, well, that it has a M4 and a smoke grenade. Everyone has a smoke. That's quite important for the CT side. And again, it seems Liquid have a, uh, a big focus on the B bomb site. They've got no lurkers. It looks like it's going to be a fast one. They don't trade for this right away. Look at up front. Only good for the one kill. Blind for the second one. He will be traded by a twist. Markolov around the statue position. But what can he do? He's hiding by a block past that. Yeah, that is a devious tactic, isn't it? Very cunning, very sly. But how long can Markolov survive? As now he tries to work the Famas, but against the AK, it just pales in comparison. A 3v2 here now for Liquid with presence on the bomb site and a bomb to be planted. They have the space to do so, but they're going to hold their ground a little bit. There's a lot to be said for having all the time in the world and trying to say, you know what, we're going to just get even better positions. We're going to wait to see if the CTs do something. We've got three players with guns out looking for those frags. Now, finally, though, as, Li as Flipside have said, look, we're not going to push until you plant the bomb. Liquid are forced to do so. So good decision making backwards and forwards from either side. Now as the 3v2 retake is the reality for flip side and it's not a reality they favor and they will back away which is a sensible thing here but a hard pill to swallow back that ass up that's what ddk says in the club is it though james i don't know i've, I don't no see, I've never seen you in a club i've so, no idea no so i don't know if you have spies following me around or exactly where you're getting this information but it seems questionable 
much like your protractor habits. Liquid, uh, they're making a good run to, to winning this. There's only been one round one on the flip side in this half. They, they won round number four by the Fuse. And since then, they have been missing. They've been on the milk cartons when they'd rather be drinking champagne. I have to say, I really like the approach in this round. We see Zeus is the guy that goes first. It's very unexpected to see someone drop the Molotov to rush through, uh, sorry, drop the smoke into the Molotov to rush through and cre basically create a rush timing. They sacrifice Zeus, which makes a lot of sense. And then they have a perfect pop flash for the players on Broken Wall, which completely opened up the site. That was actually a very, very cool round from Liquid and something you don't see done in that style all too often. So, yeah, that, that, was, that was beautiful. That was a really beautiful attack. Pop flashes. I'm loving the uh, the flashbang statistics we're getting out of HLTV as well. Yeah, that's actually really really fun to see because it's it's a lot of work figuring out good flashes, and there is a big difference between players on how well they can and cannot use utility and teams in general. Shout outs to HLTV. Just one flash now onto Flipside Tactics, and they better hope it's the uh, it's the best flash of all time. <coughs> Although to be honest with you, I think the odds are low. That it will be dead. I think the odds are low. Flipside are uh, more or less spread out in a traditional fashion at present, not necessarily trying to uh, make best use of what little they have with these two rifles. But Liquid are taking it slow. And again, beyond that one flashbang for Flipside, there aren't any smokes. There isn't really anything else to try and delay liquid apart from bodies trying to sell a stack on one site when they're in fact going to the other but now with 35 seconds left flip side are moving to stack the b bomb site unfortunately they're making a mistake yeah this is heartbreaking isn't it i mean they, this is not really a time for a round to go like this for them and it, it is somewhat of a gamble and, and this is the problem of playing cobblestone sometimes you have to just you have to just take some gambles and just hope that you can be in a position which you know works for you and you can see that they are just relegate to a save and there's there's nothing they can do and again that's cobblestone for you and liquid will move comfortably to the 14th round and it's it's uh, been a very tough half so far for Flipside. They've gained a victory in only a single round. And again, if we could, if we consider what that round was, that was a round where Liquid favorably took the A bomb site, favorably set up a three v three post plant, but still lost three individual one v ones. That's kind of an extraordinary situation to lose in that way. So, Flipside have not shown us that they have been able to win CT uh, rounds with any degree of confidence or consistency so far. With slowly heading to round number 14, trying to take these uh, rifles away as best they can, but well, that it is the princess in the tower. That's it, actually kind of insane. He risked losing his gun there, James. They don't have the money to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's he's a sap that on is the wrist. A, it is a foolish endeavor considering your opponent is trying to find you to shoot you. It doesn't care if he dies. Don't really, <laughs> yeah. Well, did it, princess in the tower, Dan? And I was going to say but there may be no Mario to save them. <laughs> 9 to 14. Flip side now at maximum. Oh no, not even. Not even. But next round it will be, should they not prove successful. But it may be too much money too late. Does that even make sense? Well, then it does he re-aggress? He's got Blaze having a look. He can run this fraction, but there are too many numbers now. Well, then it misses the shot. Blaze had his bell rung in the meantime, but he will land a kill. But what can he do? Nitro is around the corner very quickly indeed. And maybe Zeus being in-game leader is helping Nitro get into these positions. Well, then it has a shadow advantage on the low ground. But Janium's creeping on the high. There's flashbangs there as well. Force from his position. It's conceded now. If he goes back, he's surely dead. Ooh, missing the Molotov as well. I wonder if that's an opportunity for a peek there from flip side. Well, it will try to get himself an angle as he looks to creep out the rat hole position through the fence. Now it's Elise. Finds a good timing onto Markolov. That is really painful to deal with. Elise is posing such threat. And again, flip side just, they can't do anything. This has gone too poorly. They have to save what they have. Another round. This has just been such a good, they, they're being just grinded down every round. And Elise is ruthless. The dogs have been sent out for the hunt. And it is just not a fair match, is it? Well, they're trying to survive here. Gets a leg, of course. That's, <laughs> that is so sad. However, that really is, uh, that really sums up the CT side of flip side here. 15 rounds for Liquid, one away. 
Yanko is the only guy who predicted flip side, James. He is the one who got four predictions yesterday. Everyone else got five or six. He's not got off to a good start here today if Flipside do in fact lose. That's why we didn't hire analysts, Dan. Because <laughs> they're, not, they're not needed. <laughs> Whoa, shots fired. Match point for Liquid. Flipside, uh, are you going to turn up to this game? It's full squad versus just the goalkeeper, and he can't keep the ball out of the nets. The net may explode after this round. Well, the net towards Long. It's pretty much always uh, played that position post simple. Double AWPs now. Anders gets one round of joy. Yeah. Markloff on the AWP. Someone, someone call Anders. It's time to party. I'm sure the champagne's coming out already, but it may be short lived. Just want to add, like, well, that it can be found in other places as well, but. I remember like this flip side set up more or less from a very, very long time ago. Before people start tweeting me, uh, <laughs> he can be found him on the B-bomb site as well. Markov is going to be the anchor essentially with the AWP on that B-bomb site. He's not going to have much assistance initially if the, the T side of Tin Liquid rushes in right now. Two members are sort of behind the drop zone in connector at the moment and it's just Waylander. We saw him get destroyed by pop flashes in that position by Broken Wall previously. Markloff with the off angle there up the top of the stairs at the end of the plateau. There is a flash though. Puts Markloff off the angle. That creates space for Team Liquid. Now Waylander's at big risk. Markloff can't really support him that well. But that's fine. The headshot though. Good start from Markloff but Waylander goes down. Flip side slowly getting turned into burger meat at the moment. Can they hold on though? Can they escape the bat? Four on four. Markloff is still alive. Almost close for those who got. There are eight seconds for the bomb to go down. JDM, he's really can't win this round. He's got to go for the kills. Spamming the P250. But the inbox is full. Running out of bullets there. Doing what he can, but this won't be the round. Awkward. Seems like Liquid were a little bit too slow there, a little bit hesitant to just go in. Like this position here is so perfect to just use that pop flash. Perhaps there was a, That's an a issue shot. with timing from the players who were trying to split from the the drop zone. But that, yeah, that first shot was nutty. The fact he doesn't yes. take the fate of the, uh, the the bit of leg shown, then comes back and delivers the kill. Nice stuff, but. Can it continue? The two AWPs continue, seized onto the MP7 now. Again, fast fire rate for the drop zone. Will it be enough? Maybe we'll see. So see is going to be harassing towards the plateau, throwing some grenades there, while this time Liquid have a focus on A. And that's the thing, isn't it? Now Liquid, they, they know, okay, they're playing double ops. Well, we have strategies in our books, in our playbook, to address this situation. And so the element of surprise, Markov with off, may not be surprised much for much longer. As JDM will get the trade onto World Edit, playing the A long position. And now that's Liquid trying to quickly move up onto the A site, looking for the entry frags, looking to smoke the relevant choke points there to make their way in. But they are being slowed down by some good counter grenades. But ooh, that's a very big peak from JDM. The trade is in from Twist. Zeus in with a nice headshot too. This is not a good look here for Flipside. Running out of people, running out of time. And it's down to Markov to one versus three. This everybody has passed the door. He's holding the angle, but nobody is going to serve themselves up. The flashbang gives his position away as the bomb gets planted. Going for some desperation pre fire. How does he not get traded? He has to go for this, he has to push, he has to win, and he's going to win fast. He doesn't have a defuse kit, and Elige says no. The random fire will be punished at the end there, 16 to 10, and that second half was all liquid. Effectively winning just two rounds on that CT side. Flip side.